I was on bed rest for around one one year. I think I was in a trauma for six months. I thought for a moment I thought I am dead. I won't be able to land proper safely, or I will be alive. Hello, everyone. This is Swasthiki Joshi, your host, and welcome to the new episode of Know Your Career by Let's Do. Today we have with us Captain Shuel, who was the first pilot in his district, and he is here to let you know and to guide you on how to become a pilot. So, welcome, Shuel. So, firstly, I want you to introduce yourself to everyone that's watching right now. Hi everyone, myself Captain Shoaib Sheikh. I'm a commercial pilot and as an aviation instructor, where I help aspiring pilots to become a pilot. So basically, I'm having my academy where I help all the aspiring pilots to become a pilot. We have a one-stop solution where we provide all the information, guidance, and every all the possible details as well as coaching as well to become a pilot. So yeah, this was my short introduction. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that I would like to ask you is why. As in, why did you choose to do this podcast? Uh, because I have go, gone through your channel. You you provide the guidance regarding all the careers, different different careers. And as this aviation becoming a pilot, very few people know about all these things. And uh, I thought that this is the best uh best best platform for me to share my details, my guidance regarding pilot training. And I can through your channel, I can help many people. uh many students many aspiring pilots who want to pursue their career as a pilot and then don't know anything about this field so yeah that's why it will be the best way to provide and spread information regarding pilot training so can you let us know like what exactly a pilot does and what are the different pi- types of pilots basically as uh, everyone knows that pilot flies the aircraft but flying an aircraft is not only thing the pilot does before flying an aircraft for example you are going from mumbai to delhi there is a preparation a pilot needs to do regarding like all the routes about all the documentation will be looking about the weather and all the security purpose so he is uh, responsible for all the life setting behind you because any single mistake will be will be leading him to cause danger to the passenger sitting behind him so he is having a responsibilities of hundreds of passengers so yeah pilot is flying an aircraft now there are many pilots like for example there is an air force pilot who work mm-hmm. for a defense there is a airline pilot like you we all know about this thing that pilot means an airline pilot who flies in an airline there is one more pilot like who is an instructor who is teaching students how to fly the aircraft there are some charter pilots who are flying private jets there are glider pilots who are flying glider so yeah there are different types of these types of pilots are like mainly we know about air force pilots and commercial pilots mm-hmm. who fly the passenger aircraft and all this yeah. but there are different there is an helicopter pilot as well mm-hmm. so yeah who flies the helicopter yeah so what inspired you to become a pilot like from my like when i was in my childhood only uh, i was like i was having a passion of flying and uh, i i get very fascinated after seeing an aircraft fly So there's a story when I was uh, I was in fourth or fifth standard. So I I used to come to Mumbai. Basically, I'm not from Mumbai. I'm from the out of Mumbai. So my auntie lives in Mumbai. So I used to come to Mumbai to watch only aircraft. So whole day I was on the terrace watching aircraft only. Only I used to go for lunch and dinner only. So like pilot is like something who is flying something different. And where there are many people. or who are who know how to ride the bike car even there are people who uh, who who rides or who drives train and as well but it was my thing was you are as a pilot you are looking world from some another view so yeah that's in that inspires me to become a pilot and we have a very respectable job as well as i like traveling <laughs> this is the main reason that i am i like as a pilot you will be flying you will be roaming the world and for that people will be like airlines will be paying you <laughs> yes. so what did you do right that you are in this field as in what all things you did to become a pilot okay basically after my 12 you can become pilot after your 12th okay so after my 12th i did a the name of the course is cpl commercial pilot license this is the licensing course 
So it is divided into two parts. Part one, you have to clear some examination. Part two is your flying training. So after that, I took an admission in any of the flying school. And uh, I did my, cleared my examination and completed my 200 hours of flying. And then you can get a CPL, commercial pilot license. Now you're eligible to apply for any airline. So uh, what are some things that a person who wants to become a pilot should do and what are some things that they shouldn't do? See the thing is, first of all, if a person wants to be a pilot, after 10, he should be taking admission in a uh, science background. He should be having science background with physics, maths and English. Mm -hmm. These are the very mandatory subjects to become a pilot. Mm -hmm. So he should be doing his 11, 12 from uh, physics, maths and English in mm -hmm. science background plus he should be physically fit now mm -hmm. why physically fit because as a pilot you'll be flying at higher altitudes for example 35,000 feet 40,000 over there the atmosphere the weather is not similar to what is there on our earth surface mm -hmm. because as height our temperature pressure density changes and it directly affects on our body so if you're not physically fit you can get fainted and if you get fainted you have responsibility mm -hmm. on your back so he should be physically fit. Again, he should be a good English communicator. He should be knowing, he should be having a good fluency in English. He mm -hmm. should read, write and speak in English. Okay. Yes. So these are the things, these are the main and important things. And one more thing, you should be uh, more focused on your maths and physics. Because mm -hmm. uh, in pilot and uh, aviation subjects, these are the mandatory part. And you will be like, in all the subjects, there will be somewhere you will be uh, you'll be needing all the basics of math and physics. In, in your field? Yes. Field yes. Okay. So what about someone who's done arts? What about them if they want to become pilot? They can also become pilot because we have one more option. We have an option of NIS, you might be knowing about it, National mm -hmm. Institute of Open School. Yes. From there, you can give your physics or maths examination mm -hmm. or else if you are not from English background, you can give English as, as well. So with that also you can become a pilot. So basically anyone who wants to become a pilot. He can become a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> so all you need is like hard work yes, and yes. you should know maths. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, what are some kind of struggles that you faced or setbacks that you faced while pursuing your career in you know, aviation? The main struggle was your, see the thing is two things stops you to become a pilot. First mm -hmm. your physical fitness, second financial because it is a little bit expensive pool so before that you have to be even i faced uh same thing because as many of people are from middle class family and i was also from a middle class family so i was like it was hard for me to arrange money there were times which i have to stop my training because of my financial issues i have to arrange the money and all these things and uh there was like you have to be physically fit because if you're not physically fit you cannot become pilot because mm -hmm. there was a situation where uh, you might be seeing this mark like yeah. uh, i got an uh, I, I met with an accident and it was a very uh, tough time for me because i was on bed rest for around one one year and uh, and it was a very difficult thing because all all i was doing this was to become a pilot and i want my I want to look in that uniform. I want to be in that uniform, and then I was like working hard for it, and uh, like I was I met with an accident. Mm -hmm. So this it was a very very much difficult phase for me because uh, I was on bed and I was unable to move because and all these things were like it was a like a very <laughs> trauma like thing. I was in a trauma for six months, starting six months. So yeah, and again. Uh, to become a pilot, I told you, fitness and financial thing. Mm -hmm. If you are good at, uh, at all these things, you will be becoming pilot. No one can stop you to become a pilot. One of our viewers, they asked us a question to ask you. So that is basically how much it costs to become a pilot. See, the thing is, uh, it costs between 30 to 60 lakh rupees if you are doing it in India. Mm -hmm. So uh, between 30 to 60 lakh rupees, you can become pilot because there are 32 institutes in India. Hmm. And every institute have their own fee structure. So between hmm. 30 to 60 lakh, you need to become a pilot. If you have this much of amount, you can become a pilot. So did your family always support you in your dream? Uh, yes, 
because uh, my father is like uh, whatever you like you go for it before uh, getting into this i was in a rat race stuck in a rat race going for engineering 11 12th i, I was having in my mind that i'll be going for an engineering admission in a good college mm. but the thing is as i told you from starting like from my childhood only i want to become a pilot but i was not knowing anything about this field that's why in 11 12th i took and uh, i was giving examinations preparing for jwe main jwe and uh, i gave the examination also but uh i i was having in my mind that i don't know how to become a pilot but i was having in my mind that i can become a aeronautical engineer mm -hmm. i went for that i took an admission in some college over there but i then uh, again come back to mumbai i come back to maharashtra and my father is like a yeah, search some colleges nearby like in mumbai or pune then i came to uh, mumbai one of my father's friend he advised me about like there is a college over there you just go and visit and uh, you can go ahead with it so mm -hmm. i went over there and there i came to know about this mm -hmm. so my father always supported me in this way like mm -hmm. i told him that there is a like it's very expensive course and all this and he is like yeah, if, what what do you think you want to go ahead you can go ahead so they always supported me always. so actually i did see the story about your accident <laughs> so can you say that with our viewers uh, sure so basically uh, i i went for a party like before one night before over there i was suffering from food poisoning okay and uh, i w i didn't had anything from last two days i went for mm -hmm. flying also it is very like you should not do that but i was feeling energetic at that time i was not feeling that much weak mm -hmm. so i went over there i did my flying everything was fine and then when i came back i was feeling very much weak mm -hmm. so and uh, i called my father that uh, i'm feeling very much weak and uh, he is like okay fine you just uh, get a car get a cab and come back to home mm -hmm. so i was just about to go over there with my bike there was some uh, place nearby i was about to take the bike keep my bike over there uh, there was one of my aunt was living over there mm -hmm. so he is like hey, get your bike keep your bike over there and come back mm -hmm. so i was going with my a uh, uncle one of my uncle he came to uh, take me to home so i was going over there and recently uh, like it was a very fast like i don't remember anything but the thing is everything was black out while i was riding the bike okay. and i crashed into a, a tree so yeah with your uncle with yes you? with my uncle so yeah I, i crashed into the tree and everything was like i thought for a moment i thought i am dead and when i opened my eyes it was like uh, i'm i'm thinking like whether i'm in hell or heaven this was a seriously i'm telling you this was an incident that happened with me and then after few after few seconds when my uncle tapped at me and uh, like this was all uh, my eyes was closed and the blood was coming from here he took me there was uh, one guy he stopped the uh, vehicle over there and he took me uh, to the hospital okay and then i went over there and first reaction like when the doctor was cleaning everything and he was starting giving the stitches and everything i asked him just tell me whether my eyes is eyes is working or not because i'm more aware of like curious about my career yeah. like it, it will be directly affecting your career because yeah. if if my eye were, eyes were not working properly so i i cannot become a pilot and i have already spent a lot of money on this so yeah, yeah. the first question was this that uh, whether it was working or not then my father uh, was staying away like my home was like 4 to 5 hours away from that but mm. so my father came and everything and i was on my bed rest and everything and then <laughs> this mm. was this was the incident mm. happened with me and everyone is like hey, like uh, at my home for first, first one month they didn't show me my face it was it was, it was damaged yeah yeah it was that much damaged Uh, I would like to ask you your first experience as a pilot, and what was your best experience as a pilot? See, the thing is, my first experience as a pilot, I never, I never went with a flight before that. I mm -hmm. sit in a, I sit in an aircraft to learn that aircraft. Okay. Yeah. So when I like, it was my first landing experience. So basically, if you will ask any any pilot about his experience, the bestest experience is. solo when he is flying solo so basically what is solo solo means he will be flying the aircraft all alone mm -hmm. 
Okay. It's so a challenge. usually there is a co-pilot. Yes. Usually there is an instructor who is a co-pilot with you. He'll be teaching everything. Yes. So the thing is, when I was flying solo, I just took off. And when you, there is a check when you see left clear, front clear and right clear. When you look at right, no one is there. Seat is empty. Because every time you are flying with an instructor. And then I shouted a lot because it is a, basically check is your first check. Like where, uh, it's the first examination and first step of the pilot journey. Mm. There is a wing, you might have seen uh, the wing on the left side yes. of a pilot. That is a solo wing. Okay. You get that solo wing. So it was my best experience. I did all my circuit. And when I was coming for landing, I was a little bit nervous because mm -hmm. first time I was landing alone. Okay. I came, I landed, everyone, uh, when I, like, I passed the aircraft, everyone came. They were clapping mm -hmm. uh, and everyone came and meet me giving, doing congratulations. Mm -hmm. That was my best experience. And as a pilot, You'll be looking world from your another uh, another view. Mm. Like no one is looking with from that view, and you have the best views. Yeah. So whenever you do take off, if you are in tension, you have stress. Once you lift off your aircraft, every your your uh, anxiety, your depression, your stress, it just went off, and you just only focus on flying. So stress reminds me mm -hmm. that one more of the YouTube viewers they asked. Like, is your job stressful? It is stressful because uh, if if you're not present, if you don't have a situational awareness mm -hmm. and one mistake or one second can take you, your aircraft, like it can descend you 1,000 feet or it can descend you, like how it can climb you 1,000 feet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is a stressful job. It is mm -hmm. not that because you are having responsibility of your life as well as people sitting behind you. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit stressful job. But if you love your job, it is not hit much. So you have to have your all attention yes. while you're driving. Yes. Okay. So um, have you ever faced a very stressful situation while flying your plane? Yeah, there was one situation. Uh, basically, I was flying with one of my instructors. Mm -hmm. We were going for cross country. Cross country means you are going to some other place than your airport. And you will be landing over there, and then you are coming back again and landing at your airport. Okay. So I went for a cross country, and it was monsoon. We were stuck in a weather. Mm -hmm. There was, I think, it's a patch of CB. CB means cumulonimbus cloud. It is a very dangerous cloud. Okay. So there are very few chances that you'll be coming alive from that. Mm -hmm. So when I was flying the aircraft, uh, we unfortunately we stuck into the CB, and. Uh, for 20 kilometers, we were in C. Like the thing is, uh, it was a situation like someone is throwing water on aircraft on your windscreen with bucket. And every, everywhere, like every, like the clouds were full blackout. It was a dark thing. And uh, it, it is like someone is pushing aircraft downward. Like I was, within seconds, I was losing 2,000, 3,000 feet. I was control. I was just uh, holding the control on backward. I was just pulling it with all the pressure backward. And it was a situation like I thought that I won't be able to land proper safely or I will be alive. But <clears throat> with God's grace, like so after few, after a few nautical miles, nautical miles, after a few nautical miles, we received a call from Surat to descend. We descended from it. Then we landed over there. And when we landed over there, the temperature was around 16 degrees Celsius when we flying. So there was a situation that your fuel also get freezes if the temperature decreases. So it was the worst experience of my life where I was like, but I was confident that today I will not die because I am having many plans in future. So today I would be dying here. And uh, with my, like, with confident. We, me with my instructor, we landed at Surat. And uh, then next time, we never went into that cloud at all. Because we are, I, when we are doing visual flying, like uh, you are looking out and then you are flying, you are not allowed to go into the clouds. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, mostly we avoid flying in the monsoon. Yeah, because it is a very dangerous situation. 
as you can encounter any of the sea cumulative in the sky there will be thunderstorm rain will be there rain causes your visibility to get low so what is the most interesting part of your job flying is the most interesting part <laughs> yeah but uh, there must be something for the dinner that you enjoy the most oh uh, i enjoy landing and all okay. it is a very difficult task like landings are very difficult okay a single mistake can take your aircraft out of the run so but i enjoy landing because uh, i enjoy the task with challenges so yeah there were the situation i landed in a uh, low visibility as well yes thank you everyone for watching this was the part 1 we'll be coming very soon with the part 2 where we'll discuss about the process of joining the license and so much more so stay tuned